Welcome to part two of this Atari 2600 mod and restoration. In the first part, we got the console itself looking really nice. We did a whole bunch of stuff to the case. But now actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the video coming out of it look nice. We're gonna replace this crusty old RF cable with something more modern. We're gonna use composite and we're gonna get it through this tiny little board which I ordered. Now this actually came from Osh Park and it features one transistor and two resistors. We're gonna get in there, we're gonna get a clean signal out of the TIA and we're going to get that nice composite going on which will give us a good look on a modern HDTV. The first part of what we want to do is actually get rid of this over here which is the RF module. So I'm actually going to try and do this in a way which is again non-destructive. So it'd be quite easy just to tear this out but I'm actually going to try and desolder. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop on my iron which is over here and then I'm actually going to try and heat up all of these pins and again on the other side with the shielding uh, is on the the box here, uh, sorry, on the PCB. Try to desolder that and get the whole thing out in one piece, which might be a little bit of a task, but we'll see how we get on. Removing this RF module was an absolute pain in the ass. I would suggest if you're going to do this, actually just to cut all of the leads going into the board and then pull those back out as you desolder. Uh, doing it in this non-destructive manner is actually super, super painful. But we have it off now. The next thing that I actually need to do is take off these little twist tabs and take off this RF shielding box. Underneath there's going to be a bunch of components that I need to remove. And also I believe that's where the audio is going to be located. Now we have the RF shielding off the top of this board, I can show you the two components that we need to remove. So the first one right down here is, and this is next to this capacitor on the outside, this is the edge of the shielding box, is labeled R209, and this is a resistor. Then just up here, next to uh, these, what I believe are diodes, uh, they look like diodes, and by this uh, RF choke, hiding there is a tiny transistor, and this transistor on my particular model is labeled Q201. So in this case, I'm actually just gonna snip these. I'm not gonna try to save them. Um, they're easily parts that I can just replace. So let me grab some snips here. And first up, we're gonna take off this resistor. Again, they're nice and close. That's off. And let's get in on that transistor again trying to get nice and close in there boom oh, that is fiddly you can get that last lead and there we go that is off so you can see those two the transistor and the resistor now removed which lets us move on to the next step Okay, now those components are removed, the RF shield is removed, and the RF module, we're ready to start hooking up the new video PCB. But before we start doing that, I just want to verify a number of things. Number one, that the connections that we are being told are correct. So I'm actually following a guide that I'll link down again in the description. And that indicates that pin one here where the RF module went is ground. Uh, pin two is nothing. Pin three is going to be our VCC or plus five volts and that pin four here is actually uh, our video signal. So to verify that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect up my oscilloscope and I'm gonna find a ground point here. And we've got Pac-Man running in the machine as a cartridge in and the machine is now powered up. And so what we should see on that first pin is nothing, uh, as we would ground anyway, and that looks to be correct. Then on pin three, we should actually see this jumps up to five volts, which looks correct there on the oscilloscope. Let me just bring that down. So this is floating. This is pin three. And on then on pin four, we should actually see a 60 hertz cycle, which is our video. It does look like what we've got there is actually a video signal. So let's go ahead and start connecting this up. This is the module connected up with the other end of this video lead connected in. So I've actually just stripped that back and gone uh, and connected the ground in the video. 
This has been quickly tested um, and it works. So what I'm gonna do now is actually just glue gun this in, uh, just to keep it in place. And this is the audio connected up. What we have going on here is the ground running directly off of this uh, ground plane here, which is part of the shielding. And this goes straight into the cable for the audio. And the uh, audio out itself comes from the bottom of this resistor here. So this actually comes in uh, without any amplification. The sound coming out of it is not too bad. Uh, I have tested this now. So what I'm gonna do is just where we've got these areas here of just uh, soldered connections without any screening and it was a little bit tight to get some um, some shrink sleeve on there. I'm actually just going to use some hot glue again just to secure it down. So I'm going to grab my glue gun and just dump a couple of globs there and there. Leave that to, to dry, and then the next uh, section of my what I'm going to do is start to reassemble this back in the case. And there we have it. This is the video out working, and you can see just coming down here is the AV cable that runs into the back of the Atari, and this is Raiders of the Lost Ark. The audio actually looks, the audio is perfect, really crisp. It's only one channel, so you need to set your uh, amplifier or your TV out to mono, uh, which should be pretty simple. Let me just mute this a second. Um, and the video itself isn't super, super crisp. Um, you can actually see there's some uh, artifacting along the edge here. You see kind of a blur. Uh, but generally, the video is pretty good. I did need to adjust some of the colors, but happy with the quality of the output.